Welcome today. Welcome to the time when we are fed, fed by God. At this time, I'd like to offer the prayer, the pastoral prayer for the gathering. If we could bow our heads, please. Gracious and merciful Father, we stand before you today as humbled servants and honored that you allow us to walk in your shadow. We appreciate and thank you for the opportunity to act as your arm to serve those in need by serving in this organization. We come before you today, Lord, hungry and thirsty for your words, for your grace, for your guidance. We ask your blessing on this group here today. We ask your blessings on the group in the Volunteers of America Chesapeake, that they may be blessed and guided. We ask for your blessings on the leadership of this organization, that they also may be blessed and guided in your name. We praise you, Father, for this beautiful day. We praise you, Father, for the, the wonderful fall weather that we're experiencing and the beauty of the earth. The beauty of the earth which is in your image. We praise you, Father, and we thank you. In Christ's name, amen. as follows and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and whatsoever ye do in word or do ye do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word. Franklin Baker is our chief operations officer. Every day he comes to work to guide this organization and lead us in the operations of the work that we perform for those in need. Most of all, 
And beyond just being COO of this organization, he's a man of faith. So we're honored today to have his message delivered to us, his message on prosperity. Franklin. If you are feeling prosperous, say amen. amen. If you know you're prosperous, say amen again. Amen. If you hope to be more prosperous, say amen again. Amen. And so we are thankful for this message on prosperity. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much. Prosper us now as we digest your word. May we walk away from this place feeling, knowing, and being more prosperous. We ask this in Jesus' name and all the people said. Amen. amen. So today's word is focused on prosperity, prosperity. I want you to just to think about that word as we digest that for the next few moments, prosperity. By show of hands, how many of you remember the story of King Hezekiah? By show of hands, a few of you, King Hezekiah in the Bible, Old Testament, all right? We find this very intriguing story outlined in three places in the Old Testament. First and Second Chronicles chapters 30, 29 to 32, Second Kings chapters 18 through 20, and Isaiah chapters 36 to 39. So not unlike, Tammy, other stories in the Bible, there are different insights, different facts in each one of these renditions that are not found in the others. Are you following me? Right. So if you were to go to the New Testament and you talk about the story of the person who was blind and became healed, it may have taken place in Matthew and in Luke, but different facts were raised and surfaced. A similar issue here when we look at Hezekiah. So I encourage each of you, when you have some time, to read through these various renditions of King Hezekiah. Very fascinating story. For those who may not be familiar, those who did not raise your hand, you may not be familiar with the story of King Hezekiah. Let me just give you a brief synopsis. After the reign of King David and after the reign of his son, King Solomon, there were many, many kings of the Jewish people, as the Bible says, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yes, that's right. Now, I didn't say they did good in the sight of the Lord. What did I say? Yeah. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. During the time, the Jewish people, Jackie, were divided into two separate kingdoms. There were ten groups made up of the children of Israel and two groups made up of the kingdom or the children of Judah. We had kings of Israel to the north and kings of Judah to the south. Follow carefully. Unfortunately, many, David, of these rulers refused to follow, as many of us do, the clear commands, the clear statutes, the clear judgments of Almighty God. They forsook, for example, the observance of the seven-day Sabbath at their time. They, they allowed and encouraged worship of idol gods. They, they, they literally allowed and encouraged worshiping in high places known as groves. They formed inappropriate alliances with other neighboring countries. You all remember the story of various, various, very familiar king, King Ahaz and Jezebel? That alignment with some other country that was inappropriate. Say they had a lot of that in their history. They they dabbled in, watch this, witchcraft, divination. They were literally talking with familiar spirits. So these are people that had died and were coming to them, as it were, evil spirits speaking through them. So they were dabbling in all of these things. Sorcery, whole host of evil practices that, as the Bible declares, was not acceptable hear this, what was it that stood out about King Hezekiah? You heard the history. You heard where he came from, the lines of kings that were not following God's word. So what was so special and unique about King Hezekiah, Tanea? What was special? Second Kings chapter 8, verse 3 says, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. What did Hezekiah do? That which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all his father David, meaning his ancestor David, had done. And verse 5 says, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him, this is a mighty pronouncement on a man of God, Jennifer, after him, none like him among the kings of Judah, nor any before him. 
What a pronouncement. Then verse 6 says, For he clave to the Lord, and he departed not from following him. It continues, But he kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded to Moses. And then listen to finally to verse 7 in the clear word version of the Bible. It says, Mona, The Lord blessed Hezekiah in everything he did. In other words, he prospered in everything he touched. Right. Touch the person to, your, to the left or to the right of you and, and just touch them and say, I want you to prosper in everything that you touch. Everything you touch, I want you to prosper. Every person in this room, my declaring to you is, my decree to you is, God wants you to prosper in everything you set your hands to do. Come on and say amen out there. God wants each one of us, Tom, to prosper in every single thing that we touch. And then, then David had King Hezekiah. Hezekiah rebelled against the king of Assyria. And he refused to serve him. What a stark contrast, Tammy, from his predecessors. His predecessors were doing what? Bowing down to worshiping outer gods, forming inappropriate alliances with other countries, doing things that God had not sanctioned. But here we go. Hezekiah, a man of God, deciding, making the determination that he would, in fact, refuse to follow after all the kings before him. And see, many kings of Israel, saints, many kings of Israel and Judah willfully disobeyed the clear word from on high, the clear instructions, while King Hezekiah was one of the very few who purposed in his heart to live right before God. Well, there is something else. There is actually something else in Hezekiah's story for us to explore. All you Bible stu students know where I'm going. See, in Isaiah 38, verse 1, after Hezekiah prospered for many years in his reign, the Bible makes that clear, he suddenly fell gravely ill. My, my, my. And the word of the Lord came to him, urging him to set his own house in order. Why? Because he will surely die. Instead of feeling down on himself and instead of soaking in his own pity party, Hezekiah, per his character, immediately, the Bible says, turned his face towards the wall. And what does the Bible says he did? He prayed fervently unto the Lord. See, many of us get in difficulties, and what do we do? We start complaining. We, we get in our own pity party. We go to our neighbors sharing our frustration. We do not get down on our hands and our knees and ask God to help us in our crisis. Did I hear you say amen? Amen. Many of us follow in that direction. You see, God, he reminded God, see, Hezekiah reminded God how he dedicated his life to walking in truth. The Bible declares we have to bring in remembrance the Lord our God of what his promises are. Yes. Yes. Lord, you declare that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You see, we have to make clear before God what his promises are. And this is what Hezekiah did. He, he told the Lord how he not walked in evil as his forefathers did, but he walked in goodness and in truth and the commandments he obeyed. So bring, the Bible says, in remembrance before the Lord all those things that I have commanded to do unto you. That is our job as Christians. And as God has done for so many others in the past, he answered his prayer. Gravely ill, having done well all his life, gravely ill, prayed to God, fasted, got down to sackcloth and ashes as the Old Testament prophets did, and God agreed to answer his prayer. And as Ty Tribbett says on his recent cut, he says, if he did it before... He can do it again. He's the same God, y'all. Same God back then. He's the same God now. If God did it before in your life, God will do it again. Come on and say amen out there. God is the same God back at the time of Hezekiah that he's the same God in 2013. He's a faithful God. He is sure to fulfill his promises. 
How many of you ever face a difficult situation? Just by show of hands, how many of you ever face, every hand should be raised. If you're watching on the camera, you should be raising your hand. How many of us, both hands, have ever faced a difficult situation? Maybe your loved one, watch me now, or maybe you were diagnosed with cancer and somehow, some way, 10 years later, you're still walking among us. Come on and say amen. amen. Somebody has a situation where you were facing foreclosure. You, you were facing an eviction notice, and for some reason, Rob, you're in your house three years later. Amen. Amen. Or maybe someone of you, this may be very real for some of you, who are struggling with that, as the Bible declares, that besetting sin, that, that sin that does so easily beset us, some, some overwhelming e e addiction in your life, and somehow God, Marlon, has moved you beyond that besetting sin. So there's reason to rejoice in what God is able to do in our lives. So what did God do for Hezekiah? That's what you want to know. What, what did God do for Hezekiah? See, there, 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 of the hundreds of miracles, the hundreds of miracles recorded in the Old Testament and the New Testament, what God did for Hezekiah, I would argue, is nothing short of amazing. Amen. Amen. Now hold your peace, those who, who know this story, because you know where I'm going. <laughs> you see, at this time, at this time, they used what was known as a sundial. What is it called? Sundial. A sundial. All right. See, a sundial tracked the shadow of the sun's rising and setting. Yes. Yes. So what, what they would do is they would look at the sundial to determine the degree of the sundial and picture what literally would take place relative to the rising and setting of the sun. It was their measurement for where the sun was and its rising and its setting. Are you all following me? Amen. And so when Hezekiah was told directly by Isaiah the prophet that he would be given 15 more years of life, he Hezekiah, not unlike some of us, requested that God seal this promise by showing him a sign. By showing him what? A sign. A sign. Has anyone ever requested of the Lord a sign when you were convinced to go in a certain direction, Patricia, in your life? Has anyone ever requested of the Lord a sign? Uh, Lord, I, I need to know if, if I am to attend this particular university, so Lord, please ask the admissions director to, to just, just tap her on the shoulder and ask her to call me by Friday. That will confirm that I'm to attend this particular university. Are you following me? Or, uh, some of us have been in a situation, I know we have, and you're saying, Lord, I'm dating this particular person, and Lord, I need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt whether this is, in fact, the one for me. So, Lord, please uh, place upon this person I'm dating's heart uh, to, to tell me, uh, Tom, we're going to this particular restaurant on Friday. And, and if we end up at that restaurant on Friday, then, Lord, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am to marry this person. Come on, say amen out there. Somebody understands when we're making a sign to the Lord, many of us have experienced that. We're saying, Lord, I know I've heard from you. I, I know it's very clear, but I need a sign. And so Hezekiah requested a sign to confirm that God would heal him completely and give him an additional 15 years. He said, listen to this, brother. He says, it's easy enough to move the sundial degree, uh, uh, sundial 10 degrees forward. He's saying to Isaiah, oh, go back and tell the Lord. It's easy enough for him to move the sundial degrees forward. And so I need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. So I, I want the Lord to just confirm this and seal this promise by moving the sun dial degrees 10 degrees backwards. In other words, he's saying, uh, let the Lord prove to me that what he promised, meaning my healing, what he promised, my restoration, what he promised, me going from being in a state of low to a state of high, I need him to move that sundial 10 degrees in reverse. And so it was, Sandra, so it was. God honors his request and actually moved the sundial not forward 10 degrees, but backwards 10 degrees. Now, I want you all to know this had never happened in history before and never has happened since. 
There are certain things in the Bible that happened that time and never happened since. The Red Sea. Do we ever see in the Bible anywhere where the Red Sea has ever been departed? Have we ever seen anywhere in your life where someone like Lazarus was in the grave four days? The Bible says he was stinking, and all of a sudden, Lazarus come forth. So what I'm telling you is this particular event, it, it literally should appear in the, the literal, the hallmark of wonderful Magna magnanimous events of history. It, it really should appear in that hall of fame of historical events that happen in the Bible. This idea of God taking the sundial and moving it back 10 degrees. And so, as soon as the son of the king of Babylon heard this news, he wanted to pay King Hezekiah a visit. What do you think this righteous man, follow me, follow me now, what do you think this righteous man of God talked to them about as soon as they arrived at his palace? Uh, what do you think he talked about as soon as they arrived at the palace? You see, uh, the Bible actually makes it clear that Hezekiah became boastful. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says he became filled with pride in his heart. Here it is, man of God. Here it is, live faithfully for God all his life. Here it is, a man who prayed and God answered his prayer, but as soon as God answers his prayer, come on somebody in here, Amen. he becomes filled with pride. He, he forget where he came from. Oh Lord, I'm now a director in my program. I know I'm giving to touch someone, but I forgot 15 years ago when I walked into the organization, I was one of the folks on the front lines serving the people. So all of a sudden, Chad, I, I've forgotten where God has brought me from. Can anyone relate to that? Amen. You see, instead of testifying about how good God had been in healing his body, instead of testifying about how good God had been in giving him 15 more years of life, guess what he told him about? He showed them the mansion of of, of all of his precious things. He, he, he showcased all, James, all the silver and, and all the gold that was in his palaces. He, he walked through and showed him all the precious ointments and all the spices and, and all the wonderful array of his armor and, and all that was found in his treasures. And the Bible declares, listen to the word of God. The Bible declares in Isaiah 39, verse 2, there was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Isn't that curious? A, a, a man, a man who lived upright before the Lord, a, a man who followed every one of God's commandments, a man who was a model king, failed to remain humble and failed to give God the glory for his prosperity. Here's a man who did not acknowledge God as the source of his prosperity and God as the source of his success. Is anyone in the congregation today in that position in your own life? where God has clearly given you skills. He, he has clearly given you talent. He, he has clearly made you a resource to the community, and you are arriving at the conclusion, have mercy, that this is somehow my doing. Wow. Amen. Huh? Amen. This is somehow a derivative of my DNA. Come on, Brother Davis. Amen. This is somehow a, a calculus Amen. of what God has, has, has given to me especially. And there was someone in, in, in heaven. You all know who he is. Uh, the, it make, the Bible makes it real clear that he was perfect in the day in which he was created. He, he had, uh, there, there are many commentators who say he had a four-part harmony in his voice. He was very fair, Mona, to look upon. But instead of looking at where he was, the highest created being in heaven, I'm talking about Lucifer, if you haven't followed me, Amen. Instead of looking at he as the highest created being, he started desiring and aspiring to be like the God who sits on the congregation of the north. He, he decided in his mind that I will be like the most high. Amen. That's right. he, he got to a place where he started aspiring and thinking and wishing upon something that was out of his reach. He was outside of the council of Almighty God, of outside of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and he desired that position. Think about it. 
millions upon millions of holy angels bowing down as he, Lucifer, passed before them. Had the retinue of angels, holy angels, at his disposal for service. He, he was the first in command outside of the Trinity. Amen. And yet, Tom, that was not enough for this person. See, many of us, James, get to a place in our life, we forsake where God has brought us from. And we don't realize where we are. And God is saying to you right now, Marissa, he's saying, I've placed you specifically in your position to do a specific work, and I want you to focus on that task with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength, every fiber of your being. And look not upon the station or the position of others. Amen. 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 You see, I know this has never happened to anyone in this congregation before, such an august, holy assembly, <laughs> upstanding, <laughs> sinless population. But does anyone know? Does anyone know? Yes, sir, I'm setting you up. Does anyone know? Anyone, does anyone know anyone that was graciously healed by God or whose financial situation was completely turned around or who fully uh, overcome that besetting sin and then never acknowledged that it was God who worked on their behalf? Do, do you know anyone who's ever, who's ever done that, who, who literally has had some of these wonderful things happen uh, in their life and they did not stop and acknowledge that it was the God of the universe that did this for them. I mean, do you know anyone who failed to give God the glory, who, who failed to give the glory for the, their own prosperity? And as I prepare to wind down, what does the Bible mean in 3 John verse 2, one of our favorite verses, we all are quoting it, when it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may what? Prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Or as the clear word version of the Bible says, dear friend, above everything else, I want things to go well with you. This is the Lord talking. And I want them to go well for your body and to be as healthy as your soul. And so as I studied the story of King Hezekiah, I took away three closing points. First, the only way we prosper, saints, in our life's work whether we're a residential support worker, whether we're a director of a program, whether we're a financial analyst, the only way we actually will prosper in our life's work, our occupation that God has placed us in, is by doing the right things and by pursuing our occupational goals with every fiber of our being. Number two, if we want to remain healthy in our mind, in our body, we must strive to strike a balance with hard work and yes, I'm saying this, proper rest. Yes. See, I'm preaching to myself. Yes. 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 See, we, 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 we work hard. We, we, we pay the piper, as they say, Tom. We, we literally do all we can to achieve our occupational goals. But the, the, the declaration from studying the lives of people and looking at Hezekiah is we must also find a time to be able to rest. Yes. Yes. And then, you know, we also must... Think about balancing eating not just for pleasure, but eating for the well-functioning of our bodies. And then thirdly, third point, last point, we can have all, we can all, listen to this carefully, saints, as I'm closing. We can have all the riches, all the status, all the wealth, all the acclaim, all the position, all the applause, all the pats and attaboys on our back from men. But I'm here to tell you, if we don't have a healthy dose of humility, if we don't constantly find ways to give God the credit and the glory for any ounce of success we may have in our life, we don't possess true prosperity. And so as you examine your life today, my question to you is, are you prosperous in your mind? Are you prosperous in your soul? Are you prosperous in your body? We know that your hearts have been filled and your minds have been challenged as you've examined 
prosperity not only in your life, but in the lives of those around you. And the question is, have you contributed to their prosperity? We know that God has done it before and he'll do it again. And all we have to do is yield our very being to him. So as you move forward, stay aligned with God and you too will prosper as your soul prospers. As we leave you, we send you forth with an abundance of light and love. God bless you.